Welcome into Dolphins Today by Chat Sports. I am Nick Roloff, and we are reacting to day one of Miami Dolphins mini camp. This is mandatory, by the way, so if you don't show up, you are subject to fines from your individual team. And I got some good news on that part for the Miami Dolphins. But first, if you want more coverage on Minicamp, make sure you're following me over on Twitter slash X, whatever you want to call it. My handle is Nick underscore Roloff. I am posting interviews, highlights, clips all over my social media platforms for Dolphins Minicamp. So if you want to see a more in-depth look, my Twitter is the best place to go do it. So follow me at Nick underscore Roloff. All right, as I foreshadowed just one second ago, the Dolphins perfect attendance that cannot be said for other teams around the nfl as we've seen holdouts with cd lamb and brandon iuk and even hassan reddick with the new york jets but all miami dolphins players were there including tua obj tyreek hill the newly extended jalen waddle and maybe not everyone participated in every single practice drill more on that in just a second but at least everyone was there in some capacity working out with their teammates. So let's get into the Dolphins' takeaways from day one. And number one is that this team is behind quarterback Tua Tagovailoa. Obviously, contract extension rumors surrounding Tua is the headliner of this offseason as he's entering the final year of his rookie deal, fifth year option. The Dolphins do have two years of team control left, including a couple of franchise tags. But the Dolphins seem to want to get a contract extension done. We know Tua wants to get a contract extension done. And it feels like everything is kind of progressing to a point where it will happen before training camp at the end of July, early August. But that is the main topic right now. And Tua was asked about it after practice by the Dolphins media. And he was kind of pretty emotional about it. Not like an emotional of like being sad or anything like that, but he was just very pumped up about him getting his money and he said the market is the market what does that mean like he kind of mentioned about how he probably wants to get paid more than Jared Goff right who just got a deal with 53 million dollars in annual average salary over four seasons coming off the 212 million with 170 million dollar guarantee I would expect to his contract to be in that range my projection for uh, Uno is $220 million over four years, which is $55 a year, and $180 million guaranteed, just a little bit higher than Goff. But I also think Tua is a better QB than Goff, and he is younger. Tyreek Hill was also asked on the situation. He said Tua should have been paid, and the interesting part about this quote is that it's in the past tense. So he's kind of talking about it should have already been done. He's not saying... Yeah, get two of his money. Well, he is saying that, but he kind of is basically, when he said this quote, was like, yeah, I think he should have already been paid by Miami. And to me, this is just his wide receiver one having two his back. And he's not the only wide receiver on this roster to have two a back. Jalen Waddle, when asked about contract extensions and his own, he said, I want two to get paid as well. So it is very clear to me that the wide receivers on this Dolphins team, Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, they love playing with Tua because I just feel like if they didn't, they would have tried to work around that question. Maybe not work around, but not voice so much support for Tua. But they love him. He's an accurate quarterback. He's been able to get Jalen Waddle 1,000 yards over the past two seasons, or three seasons, really. Tyreek Hill over 1,500 yards a season over the last two since joining Miami. So these wide receivers like working with Tua. Tua likes working with them, and they all have each other's back. And another good thing, too, from Dolphins minicamp today, Tua was cooking. And I want to mention this was specifically in 7-on-7 seven seven drills because he did not participate in 11-on-11 11 11 full team activities. And it kind of feels like he won't be doing that. He is not holding out of Dolphins minicamp, but I believe he is purposely not working in with the 11-on-11 11 11 situations because he does want to get paid. Obviously, you're not going to get hit as a quarterback, but there are certain different aspects that come to doing 7-on-7 seven seven in comparison to 11-on-11. 11 11. But Tua was a standout. All B Dolphins reporters and media members were saying how accurate he was, and they were just dominating on offense, including a nice 20-yard strike 
to Devon Achan out of the backfield, who had a nice day at camp too, to uh, showing out at Dolphins mini camp. All right, number two on our takeaways list, Jalen Phillips. He's progressing pretty well in terms of his health. We got an all-time clip, by, or not clip, if you will, but a story coming out of day one. This one's coming from David, who covers the Dolphins. A highlight of Dolphins' first minicamp practice. Jalen Phillips came outside from rehabbing inside, yelled for Omar Kelly, who covers the Dolphins for the Herald, to watch him in jogs, asking loudly if he's still limping. Indeed, Phillips was not limping with his stride. I don't know if you know the story, but Omar Kelly, in an article about two weeks ago when it came to OTAs, put in it that he is concerned about Jalen Phillips because he saw a noticeable limp. And I think it's absolutely hilarious that Phillips obviously saw that or the article got back to him. He feels that he is not limping and showcased it to the entire media members and Everybody there and calling him out one-on-one. -on -one. That is just hilarious to me, and I love that fire mentality from Jalen Phillips. But on a more serious note, he did suffer a torn Achilles on November 24th against the New York Jets on Black Friday, if you do not remember. And the reason why I'm bringing this up, I don't think you guys did forget, but I want to talk about the date, because that happened on November 24th. And... I was doing some research on an Achilles injury, and it's different for every single position and different sport, but the average recovery time from a torn Achilles is four to six months. That's what Aaron Rodgers was dealing with after he tore his Achilles in week one of the NFL season. There's obviously those rumors of him trying to come back in December and January, which evidently didn't happen, but this is kind of the timetable for a, um, Jalen Phillips. And the question is, is he going to be ready for week one in September. Now, if you do the math, week one in September is much longer than four to six months, but when you're an edge rusher who really prides themselves on getting off the ball quickly and how you need to be on your toes and then jump, right, and you use those calves, that Achilles muscle, like you need to make sure that is at 100% so there's not a chance of re-injuring it. Phillips said that he expects to be ready by week one so he can be going up and taking down Trevor Lawrence to get the Dolphins a 1-0 start. I hope he's right, but all I want to say here is make sure you are 100% because the Dolphins are trying to win a Super Bowl, not just win the first game of the season, so make sure you're 100% Jalen Phillips. But that brings me to this question for you. Will Jalen Phillips play week one for the Dolphins against Jacksonville on September 8th? If you believe... He will type P for play. If you think he'll miss that game, type W for won't. All right, next takeaway here from day one is that Tyreek Hill will not be a distraction long term for this Dolphins team because Tyreek Hill wants a pay bump. There is no doubt about that. After Justin Jefferson's contract extension got announced just earlier this week, it was very clear that Hill probably wants to get paid similar to that because Tyreek Hill has been the best, if not the second best wide receiver in all of football over the past two or three seasons, specifically with the Miami Dolphins. And with Jefferson getting paid on an annual average basis of $35 million with that extension, I assume to, uh, Tyreek Hill wants to be there. And because of other guys getting paid, Tyreek Hill is kind of falling out of the top five in terms of paid wide receivers. And Hill has just been so good that he wants to probably be in that top five range once again. More on that conversation in a second, but make sure you are started with Prize Picks, the number one daily fantasy sports app on the market with the NHL Finals and our Florida Panthers in there taking on the Oilers. And then you got the NBA Finals. There's no better time to get started with Prize Picks. And the best part about PP is that they got the best promotions in the business. Prize Picks has got you covered every week from lowering select player stat projections on Tuesdays, which increases your chances of getting a win, to getting your entry fees back if you have a losing lineup on Friday. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Get in on the daily action with your friends and become a part of the Prize Picks community today. I already have an entry for game one of the NBA Finals because I'm a basketball guy. That's where I get my. Uh, I guess hoops knowledge for I love it. And I took less than on Jason Tatum, 27 and a half points. More than Derek White, 14 and a half points. And more than on Daniel Gafford, 
six rebounds. You could join me and celebrities like Stephen A. Smith playing prize picks on every single day. Download the app and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Or you can go in the description and comments of today's video. Click on that link, prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use that code one more time, CLNS, to get a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, back to Tyree Kill because he was asked about wanting more money after Justin Jefferson's deal. And, well, Marcel, who covers the Dolphins, had a really good note here. The Dolphins' Tyree Kill said he's going to let his agent, Drew Rosenhaus, handle his contract situation, said he's happy to be in Miami and wants to help the team however he can. And the direct quote, being greedy ain't going to help the team. And I think that line is really important, being greedy ain't going to help the team. Because Tyreek Hill, in my opinion, is going to have to wait if he wants a contract extension. Now, could the Dolphins shift around money to front load his deal and take some of the money in that 2026 year and give it to him now so he's paid this season as a top five wide receiver? Sure, but the Dolphins need to get extensions done with Tua Tagaloa. And I'd honestly put Javon Holland in this list as well because I think he's a top five safety in all football. And he's in his last year of his four-year rookie deal after being a second-round pick. Tyreek Hill should know and needs to know that he is at the back of the line in terms of contract extensions that Chris Greer in this Dolphins front office has to hand out. Two is number one. I'd put Holland two, and then Tyreek slots there into three, and then that's probably where Jalen Phillips would come into play with number four. But Tyreek Hill, I think, needs to be patient and needs to wait to get an extension. I would probably project that a Contract extension for Tyreek would come next offseason after they square away Javon Holland and Tua Tugavaloa. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you do not miss out on anything surrounding the Miami Dolphins. Whether it be minicamp, news and notes, rumors, we'll have it all on the channel. So subscribe today. I'm Nick Roloff. We'll have you covered. All right, takeaway number four. Janu Smith and the tight ends were heavily involved with the Miami Dolphins offense today. And I've got a take coming in just a second. But when you look at this room, I'm a fan. Now, it might be looked at as one of the weakest parts of this Dolphins roster, but Jonu Smith coming over in free agency, I think he's going to be a good addition. Durham Smythe obviously returning. You signed Jody Fortson in free agency. Julian Hill trying to make a name for himself. But I think there is a star in the making. And star might be a strong word, but... Someone who is quickly rising up the depth chart, in my opinion, coming in the form of Jody Fortson, the former Kansas City Ch Chief tight end who missed the entire 2023 season due to Dolph or due to a shoulder injury. Excuse me. I ha am dangerously close to moving him him up the depth chart and having him be tight end too. He has been making nothing short of fantastic plays in the last three weeks for Miami. Today in the first day of minicamp, the two weeks of OTAs, he's been really good, and beat reporters are raving about him. And prior to that season-ending injury in 2023, Fortson has been solid in his career. Only played in 19 games, but he's also was buried on that depth chart behind Travis Kelsey in Kansas City. When he got targeted, he usually caught the ball. I mean, 18 targets and had 14 catches. Also had 155 yards and four touchdowns. Like Those numbers are very solid. He's a solid red zone threat, a big-bodied tight end who's very athletic. And to me, his emergence just continues to solidify my belief in this tight end room for the Miami Dolphins. I'm high on this group. Jonu Smith, this is not an opinion, this is a fact, the best yards after catch tight end in the NFL. It is statistically proven that if you get the ball in his hands, he is the best at making something happen after the fact. You pair that up with the wide receiver room that Miami has, obviously with the big three, and then you have the rookies coming on as well. Like You have a plethora of weapons to throw the ball to. And then if you were to pair up Jody Fortson as a red zone threat with Jonu Smith's yards after catch ability, you have a sneaky good tight end room that many people around the National Football League probably won't mention, and the national pundits won't talk about how good this tight end room is. That's fine by me. Let him fly underneath the radar and let him dominate on Sundays with Tua throwing him the rock. That kind of brings me to this, and it's an intriguing question. Like, the Dolphins tight end room, where do you guys grade it at? What is it ranked on a scale of 1 to 10? It's not the best. It's not, but I think it's sneaky good. I'll give it a 7-7. Seven, seven. 
pretty good. Don't, don't, don't disrespect my 7-7. Seven, seven. The 7-7s seven, are good. Let me know yours. All right, last takeaway from day, day one is this wide receiver room is an absolute bloodbath. This should come to no surprise. We've kind of documented this throughout OTAs and ever since they drafted two wide receivers in the NFL draft and Malik Washington and Taj Washington. But River Craycraft is fighting for his roster spot. Eric Azukama, um, Braxton Barrios thing is safe, but like he's not a locker scene. I think he could be, but it's not guaranteed. Craycraft had a few nice catches on day one of minicamp, including a nice one-hander, according to some reports. And to me, when you look at the entire landscape of the NFL, you go through every single team's depth chart and go position group by position group. There is not a more crowded room in the entire NFL than the Dolphins wide receiver room. There just isn't. You have, obviously, the three that are guaranteed, guaranteed. Hill, Waddle, OBJ. You have two rookies that are very enticing, in my opinion, Malik Washington and Taj Washington. We mentioned Eric Uzukama, River Craycraft, Braxton Berrios. You also have some other guys like Matthew Sexton out there that have been on an NFL roster in the past. Like This wide receiver room is so dang crowded. It's going to be interesting to see who comes out of here. I think Miami keeps six wide receivers on the 53-man roster. My prediction for a long time has been Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, OBJ, Malik Washington, Braxton Berrios, and Taj Washington. We'll see if Eric Azukama or River Craycraft can crack into that sixth spot on the Dolphins roster. All right, that's going to do it for today's video. Like I mentioned, make sure you do subscribe to the channel as we're going to have you covered on everything surrounding the Dolphins at minicamp and throughout the rest of this offseason. So join us. I'll see you on the next video. Go Finn.